Hi guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to kick off our lore series that will cover every aspect of Sea of Thieves in depth. We are starting with the most important character in the game, Captain Flameheart. Sorry, Pirate Lord fans, but you're gonna to have to wait. While we know relatively little about Flameheart, there are some breadcrumbs left for us to follow, and I'll leave room for a bit of speculation at the end. Now, without further ado, on to the video. Long ago, soon after the Sea of Thieves was rediscovered, Rathbone, a crewmate of the Pirate Lord, betrayed him, selling the treacherous Stitcher Jim a map through the Devil's Shroud, shortly after the Pirate Lord had returned after a month-long voyage exploring the Sea of Thieves. This led to many pirates and crews leaving to claim a piece of the Sea of Thieves for themselves. One of these rogues was a pirate that would eventually be known as Captain Flameheart. He was a crew member of a ship called the Burning Blade, captained by a man known as the Captain. Yeah, really. After some time amassing a huge fortune, Flameheart had raised enough gold to retire, he left the Sea of Thieves to raise a family. It is unknown if he married in this time, but we do know he adopted a child, an orphan boy that would grow up to become Captain Flameheart Jr. He made sure the boy was well educated and trained to become an adept swordsman, seemingly taking after his father. After several years in retirement, Flameheart returned to the Sea of Thieves for unknown reasons. We know this was before the Pirate Lord's ninth year on the Sea of Thieves because in Ramsey's diary found on the Shroudbreaker Tall Tale, he had an encounter with the Burning Blade. Flameheart may have been cursed at this point because the Burning Blade's cannons were described as infernal. Infernal meaning hellish or of the underworld. The Burning Blade managed to sink the Magpie's Wing, the Pirate Lord's personal ship. Many years after this event, Captain Flameheart committed mutiny and ruined the cabin to an unknown island. This island seems to have been the place where Flameheart originally became a skeleton lord with the captain, as there is a chalice on the island that can turn people into skeleton lords. In the following years, Flameheart raised an army of followers loyal to his cause, that cause being to bring freedom to the Sea of Thieves. Flameheart stood against the trading companies, believing them to have no place in the Sea of Thieves, and that the Sea of Thieves should be anyone and everyone's, as long as you were strong enough to take it. He created four lieutenants to enforce his rules. These are the four Ashen Lords we encounter in the game, Old Horatio, Captain Grimm, Warden Chi, and Red Ruth. They all oversaw his operations to ensure his army was well supplied and disciplined. Old Horatio saw the construction of Flameheart's fleet as a shipwright, and was also involved in press ganging skeletons into joining his side. Warden Chi was Flameheart's prison warden, she kept watch over everyone who Flameheart wanted to keep alive, torturing them, but making sure not to kill them. Red Roof was an alchemist by trade, responsible for designing weapons as well as cursed cannibals for the Burning Blade. Her manner of speech and dialogue also indicate that she was the main planner and tactician of the army. Captain Grimm was responsible for constructing the fortresses and Flameheart's lair to defend and hold all treasure that they stole. In my estimate, around 10 years after Flameheart returned to the Sea of Thieves, he was defeated. Not killed, but defeated. His son soon after hears of his death. I believe this to be around the time that he's defeated and Flameheart Jr. appears to be very recently of adult age. This puts Flameheart's defeat around 19 years after the Sea of Thieves rediscovery. Upon his defeat, Old Horatio binds Flameheart's soul to his remains. It was most likely Old Horatio as we know he had the power to bind people to objects or their remains. We see Grey Marrow has this power too, but I believe he learned this power much later. Old Horatio commandeers the Ashen Dragon, one of the most powerful ships in the fleet, and places Flameheart aboard it. He orders the captain to set course for Flintlock Peninsula, but is disturbed by Captain Martha Jane and Randall Stone. For their treachery, Old Horatio kills them both and binds them to their remains, to prevent them from joining the Ferry of the Damned and returning for revenge. They eventually make land for Flintlock Peninsula, to lay Captain Flameheart to rest. A procession of skeletons leads the sarcophagus to the burial chamber. The burial chamber is sealed to make sure his remains remain safe. Old Horatio ordered Captain Adara to plot a course for the Devil's Shroud, and in a moment of pure might, Old Horatio burned into a mighty blaze, powerful enough to part the Shroud, leaving him as a pile of ashen dust. The Ashen Dragon sailed through the Shroud to be called upon another day. Before the player arrives in the Sea of Thieves, Flameheart Jr. is informed of the death of his father. He laments his death, but is ultimately inspired to begin his own journey to pirate legend. He begins by asking around about the Sea of Thieves, and due to his educated manner, he doesn't get very far. That is until he comes across Isidro, a pirate that is willing to help him in exchange for one ancient coin. Jr. acquires a galleon, wanting to call it Liberdade meaning freedom in his two favourite spoken languages. Isidro advises him not to change the name, so he settles for the ship's given name, the Silver Blade. Fun fact, the game's version of the Silver Blade's figurehead does not match up with the description in the Tales of the Sea of Thieves book. The description better fits the aristocrat figurehead, which is a girl releasing a dove while she is gripped by death. The crew also adopts a cat to catch mice on the ship, called Trouble. Flameheart Jr. arrives at the Sea of Thieves, and is given a voyage by the Order of Souls, in which they have to obtain a chest for them. On the voyage, the ship is beset with no wind. While waiting for the winter 
to return, Junior's crew composes the Shanty Becalmed. This is the song if you're not familiar with the names. This is how we know this already happened, as the song is a well-known shanty in the Sea of Thieves. Eventually they secure the chest from an island in the wilds. The chest is unique and is very obviously cursed. It creeps the crew out so they lock it in the brig. Soon after, they're attacked by a galleon in a surprise attack. Junior, being the inexperienced sailor he is, panics and sails the ship directly into the shroud. This, of course, dooms the silver blade to its watery grave. The crew abandon ship and finds themselves marooned on an island. After some time surviving on the island, the crew decide to begin searching the island's tunnel system, eventually finding a riddle. A riddle that leads Junior to find a chalice and a fountain of water. They choose to drink from the fountain, noting the water's sweet taste. The chalice is passed around the crew in the coming days, weeks, or even months. Flameheart begins to notice they no longer need basic needs. They don't need to light a fire for warmth at night, they no longer want for food. Something is wrong. Very wrong. The final entry is very cryptic. Junior is told to make this entry by the entity known as the Catman, a skeleton lord that tells Junior about the other skeleton lords. These skeleton lords are the very same that the Catman looks forward to crushing. The Catman informs Junior he reminds him of his father, the man who left him here on the island. He takes Flameheart under his wing and thanks him for returning his faithful cat. Around five months after the maiden voyage, Wanda the weapon shop owner of Golden Sands Outpost discovered a cannon from the Burning Blade. From this, she uses the metal to forge the many cursed cannonballs found across the Sea of Thieves. Unfortunately for Wanda, the metal is cursed and the curse can affect humans too. She begins to turn into a skeleton, with her arm showing the first signs of the curse. Her partner in crime, Salty, is turned into an undead parrot as he also works the metal. It seems as though there was a part of Flameheart's influence left in that cannon, which causes Wanda to proclaim her loyalty to him. She becomes a full skeleton and raises a fleet crewed by the undead. Wanda, now named the Warsmith, wages war on all fronts for a month, where her fleet is slowly picked apart by the crews of the Sea of Thieves. This culminates in one final battle, with Wanda's ship being sunk. As she sinks to the depths of the ocean, she reflects on her defeat. She will return stronger, with her new master. Wanda dons a mask and a set of robes and wanders the seas. Her identity is now hidden. She says in her journal that the mask helps her hide her anger. A year later, she discovers something on an uncharted island, a strange stone circle. She decides to set up camp on the island. She begins handing out doubloons to pirates who can return mysterious reaper's chests to her and soon after begins to accept rarer items, including captain's chests, villainous skulls, and exotic silks. Wanda comes into possession of some dark relics, which can be used for resurrection rituals. She tests these out on Old Boot Fort, opening a gateway to the Sea of the Damned, allowing for a second ritual to summon the Ghost of Grey Marrow. This was a test for the events to come. Wanda gets wind of the whereabouts of the legendary Captain Pendragon, the captain of the Black Witch, who is locked away in a portrait by Grey Marrow. It is possible she summoned Grey Marrow to find out his whereabouts. Before he was sealed away, he was a tool used by the Order of Souls to hunt down skeletons. He was sealed in a portrait of himself by Grey Marrow in a quest to find the Shroudbreaker. She frees him from the portrait by sending Stitcher Jim to the Black Witch with the relics. The player crew encounters Captain Pendragon, who, despite his ghostly form, wishes you to help him carry out his work to free souls from the binding ritual. He borrows the Lantern of the Damned from the Ferryman and lends it to you. The crew tracks down the Ashen Dragon, releasing Martha Jane and Randall Stone from their remains. Eventually the player lands on Flintlock Peninsula, with the Lantern leading us to the chamber. We retrieve the skull, hoping to save this poor soul from his remains, and the final captain is finally released. So that's the story up until Flameheart's return. I decided to leave it there because there's a lot of gaps in speculation to be had. So, who did defeat Flameheart? If I had to make a guess, it was most likely Ramsey. Ramsey seems to be the only character who could potentially go toe to toe with Flameheart. There is talk about Grey Marrow being the man or skeleton that sealed him away, but from what we learn about old Horatio, it seems like Flameheart was sealed away by him to prevent him from death. Along with this, Grey Marrow is one of the characters to reject the Pirate Lord's proposal to form an alliance, so his ideals are probably aligned with Flameheart's. I haven't seen anyone do this, but Flameheart has his own theme, who shall not be returning, and no one I've seen has tried to analyse this. The first line mirrors we shall sail together. Hold fast, tides are turning, and the fire is burning. Who shall not be returning? We shall sail together. I think the first line is meant to be a mockery of the Pirate Lord's song. The sad tone of the song seems to fit with Flameheart's defeat. I think the fire's burning refers to the funeral pyre for Flameheart, and the phrase who shall not be returning is referring to Flameheart himself. 
Flameheart is the flame who shall not be returning. This is just my interpretation and I'm sure I'm going to be wrong in the coming months. Another big piece of speculation is the identity of the captain. Falcor recently put out a video on this stating that the captain and Flameheart are the same person, which can make sense, but I don't subscribe to the theory. Does not a patch on his videos, I'm a huge fan, but I don't think the timelines quite match up. It would require Flameheart to leave the Sea of Thieves, return, die, then become cursed, meet his son, and then be defeated again. It's possible, but it's messy. I think the captain is a new character that will be introduced in the storyline. As for the twin betrayals, let's start with Flameheart's betrayal from his own kind. This can mean two things other skeleton lords or other pirates. This seriously could be either or, but someone would have to expose his weakness to stab him in the back. The captain being marooned by Flameheart may have been an act of revenge. I believe Flameheart was called back to the Sea of Thieves and we know he values loyalty. I think he returned to serve his captain only to be tricked into becoming a skeleton lord. This in turn causes him to maroon his captain as revenge for taking him away from his son. The term Pirates for All Eternity wasn't something Flameheart wanted but was forced upon him by the captain. Hence why Junior's diary entry is titled as such. Flameheart is often thought of being a bad guy. The obvious motives of fire and death don't help. But I think we'll begin to see him as a tragic character. He's not like the gold hoarder who is motivated by greed. He left the Sea of Thieves when he was comfortable, adopted an orphan, made him want for nothing, educated him, and gave him a future. If Flameheart was such a bastard, why would he want his child to have a future better than his, so he doesn't end up like him? You can also see his kindness and natural lust for adventure reflected in Junior. The skeleton curse seems to affect everyone differently, and can often reflect one's wants, needs, and traits. The flames can represent anger, but also courage, which is reflected by his son. We can see the gold hoarder's greed represented in gold, how it physically and mentally consumes him. Flameheart is much the same. His anger and courage are his biggest traits. This is why he calls Stitcher Jim a contemptible little man, meaning Jim is cowardly and despicable. I mean, his whole trading company is about testing yourself in battle, where the battle is more important than the reward. The company offers no voyages and ensures you have the freedom to contribute how you want. The Sea of Thieves was always meant to be a place away from trading companies, for pirates to live and take as they see fit. As a father, he is neither an anchor to hold us back, or a sail to take us there, but a guiding spectral light who shows the way. That's it for this episode. Remember, if you made it this far and you liked the video, make sure you subscribe and drop a like. I've got more lore in the coming weeks and an in-depth look at Season 1 coming whenever Red decide to drop it. Do you have any theories on Flameheart? Let me know in the comments. I hope this clears things up as the lore can be muddy in some places. Not all of it is fact, but I've done my best to piece the puzzle back together. So, thanks again for watching.